Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon and welcome to this press conference after the first ever EU Digital Summit. Uh, first of all, Estonian Prime Minister Yuri Ratas will present the results of the meeting and then I will pass the floor to President's, uh, European Council President Tusk for his remarks and the President of the European Commission, uh, Juncker, for his remarks. With that, please, uh, Prime Minister, the floor is yours. Thank you. Dear Tonald, dear Jean Claude, dear friends, honorable journalists, I am pleased to say that I have had the most inspiring and extremely valuable debate with you and the rest of my colleagues. At the first ever digital summit, we discussed the future of government, cybersecurity, digital economy, and the better use of data across our borders as well as the future of work and the need for high-level digital skills. We all agree that the digital revolution is here to stay and that the digital developments are transforming every aspect of our lives and our societies. First, on e-government, as government leaders, we must start by ensuring that our own services are fully digitalized to better serve our people and businesses. This would also make our governments more efficient and make our societies more future-oriented. Our four freedoms also need digital, cross-border public services to function better. But e-governance will not work unless people have trust in e-services and digital devices. So, second, we must strengthen cybersecurity. We need to have research systems and tools who are secure with the right regulatory framework, financing and infrastructure. This is something we can only achieve if we are safeguard European cyberspace as a whole. Improving our cybersecurity is also one of the most important things we can do to improve our citizens' rights and freedom. Third, the economy, I can ensure that all member states are fully committed to completing the digital single market by the end of 2018. A functioning digital single market is the foundation for everything we do. But this is not enough. We need investments in infrastructure, especially 5G research, development, and industry, but also in artificial intelligence and in supercomputing, uh, they are tomorrow's reality. Europe has to be at the forefront of developing fundamental and breakthrough technologies for our society, our economy, and our security. We need to make Europe the world's most attractive platform for the data economy. And un another necessary element is a modern and coherent framework for managing and processing data, the raw material of a data economy. This includes free movement of data, a central freedom for the digital era. And fourth, we need to be ready to rethink our idle labor market and labor relationships, our education and training systems, and our social system more generally. We need to include everyone. No one should be left behind. I will draw my preliminary conclusions or takeaways from today's discussions and share them with my colleagues before meeting in Brussels in three weeks. Time for our regular European Council meeting will take place. In addition to that, we call the digital ministers to meet for the Telecom Council is already a few weeks to take this summit's conclusions forward. 
honourable journalists, dear friends, I hope Tallinn marks the beginning of a journey and that this has boosted our ambition to fully benefit from all the potential our digital future can offer. If we want to keep our economic and social triple A ratings, we also need a digital triple A. Because there is no question the future is digital, 100%. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prime Minister. Uh, President Tusk, the floor is yours. Thank you. Let me start by thanking Prime Minister Rata for hosting the Tallinn Digital Summit. It was indeed a very special event about the future of Europe. And many thanks to all the Estonians for your great hospitality and for inspiring Europe with your digital spirit. We held the summit because Europe must use the opportunities created by huge advances in everything from robotics to artificial intelligence. We need to actively shape our future and manage the risks posed by the digital revolution to our societies and democracies. That is why the leaders focused on how the EU could successfully navigate the opportunities as well as the risks. We will now work together with uh, Prime Minister Ratas to prepare the conclusions for the October European Council based on our discussions. Now let me make a comment on the last night's dinner. As you know, the leaders had an informal debate on the situation of Europe and on our future work in the European Council. I was mandated to translate this good debate and the visionary speeches we have heard recently into a concrete work program. Therefore, I have already started bilateral consultations. In addition to my meeting with Prime Minister Ratas, today I also met the Prime Minister of Bulgaria, Croatia, and the Chancellor of Germany. And during the next two weeks, I will consult all member states. Based on those consultations, I will present a very concrete working plan with a number of decisions that need to be taken by the leaders in the next year. Something I could call the Leaders' Agenda 2017 and 18. This means further development and enrichment of the program that I have presented in my Tallinn letter. It will include Interalia the launch of the permanent defence cooperation by the end of 2017, a Euro summit in December to further deepen the economic and monetary union, with a special focus on the completion of the banking union, or a Western Balkans summit during the Bulgarian presidency in the EU. Our guiding principles are clear and I hope will not change. First and foremost, I will do everything in my power to keep the unity of the EU. Secondly, I will concentrate on finding real solutions to real problems of our citizens who are concerned about security, migration or unemployment. And finally, we will all make sure that Europe is making progress. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now President Juncker. Good afternoon. Thank you, Yuri, for to the, the today's uh, event. Well done. This uh, was the first digital summit, but it was not the first time the European Council had to deal with digital. We have had 10 European Councils where, in the conclusions, we were making reference to the digital uh, agenda. And this event of uh, Tallinn is an important step uh, uh, forward. We have uh, to decide and to act uh, quickly. I give you an example. One year ago, the European Council agreed to increase coordination in spectrum management. One year later, nothing has been done because prime ministers are in favour of this spectrum agenda, but several ministers are blocking the decision-making process in the Council. This has to be uh, changed. The Commission, till now, has uh, put 
24 legislative uh, initiatives on the table since May 2015. 18 still need to be agreed. This has to be done. Agreement on the 18 proposals inside the time framework of uh, one year and a half. I know the Estonian Prime Minister, the Austrian Chancellor and the Bulgarian Prime Minister are very committed as far as this is uh, uh, concerned. We are of the opinion that in the digital sector, tax has to be paid where it is due, be it online or be it offline. This will have to be done, and the Commission will propose next year uh, new rules on fair and effective taxation that provide legal certainty and a level playing field for all. In the same way, we will continue our uh, undertakings as far as uh, cyber security legislation is uh, concerned. We will establish a European cyber security agency. This will be done in the next uh, month. So we are on a good avenue, and I wish us all the success the Estonians merit. Thank you very much. <clears throat> we now have time for a few questions. Uh, before, uh, please state your name and the media you work for and to who you address the question. I would also like to point out that um, we have a translation for those if uh, one of the leaders would wish to um, uh, answer in his own language. Uh, let's see. Let's start in the middle there, Marco. Thank you very much, Marco Bresolin, Italian newspaper La Stampa. Uh, today you discussed the proposal of uh, the digital tax. Um, the Italian Prime Minister Gentiloni said that uh, you are finding an agreement between uh, the 27 member states. But if an agreement is not possible, uh, some member states could go on with an enhanced cooperation. What do you think about this idea of uh, multi-speed multi uh, taxation? Thank you. Jan Klaat. The ECOFIN Council will uh, deal with the details of the issue you mentioned. I do think that we will have an agreement. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, the gentleman up there, Jim. Uh, Jim Brunsden from the Financial Times. Again, it's, it's a question on the on the uh, digital, well, on the turnover tax proposal um, for tech giants. G given that there does seem to be a division of opinion about exactly how to proceed on this issue, has any further clarity come out of today's discussions on on some kind of? compromise way forward or, or an alternative plan, because it does seem that there are a number of countries who are strongly against the, the turnover tax idea. Thank you. Uh, Jim, just to whom do you address the question? Um, uh, it's a good point. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, to, well, I guess since, since it's a file that we dealt with legislatively to the presidency, so to the, uh, to the Estonian presidency. Yeah, I have a question that on Arutelul loomulikult see teema oli, oli laual ja kindlasti sandis selgust rohkem erinevate riikide seisukohtade osas selles küsimuses. Ma kindlasti usun, et siit on võimalik edasi liikuda ja seda ühis osa leida, et täna lõplik otsust loomulikult ei sündinud. Okay, next question in the, in the front row there, the gentleman in the greyish, um, with the beard, in the grey beard. Thank you very much, Pablo Rodriguez from the Spanish newspaper El Mundo. Um, on Sunday, a referendum has been calling in Catalonia illegal according to the government and the Spanish courts. Uh, are you worried about the development of, of the situation? And do you have any message either for the citizens of the leaders of the Spanish or the Catalan government um, uh, from an institutional point of view? Nous n'avons pas discuté cette question aujourd'hui. 
j'ai dit au nom de la Commission à plusieurs reprises euh, quelle est notre position. Nous en, nous, nous en tenons à la position que la Commission Prodi a prise et que la Commission Barroso a confirmée. Nous sommes très attachés au respect de la règle de droit. La Cour constitutionnelle espagnole a pris un arrêt. Le Parlement espagnol a pris une décision. Nous nous en tenons là. OK, I think we'll squeeze in one last question for the lady up there. Um, hi, Andrew Timo from Bloomberg. Mr. Tusk, I have a question regarding your plan that uh, you're going to propose uh, in two weeks. Um, how do you think you will be able to avoid uh, on this list uh, the idea of to speed Europe? Thank you. After our yesterday's discussions, and also because of my personal experience as a president of the European Council, I am absolutely sure that unity remains our highest priority. And uh, I am absolutely sure that I am entitled to, to say it on behalf of all 27, 28, still 28 uh, member, member states. And, uh, mm, I have no guarantees, of course, but I am also very optimistic because I think that in, in this very context, context I, um, I've been and, and I will be um, uh, very effective. Okay, thank you very much. This concludes this press conference. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you again. Okay. Thank you, President.